Jordan Benson movement vlog. Physical transformation for a text. To help me embody my character, I took to using the fourth side by Uta Hagen. The fourth side is the one side that features the audience or the camera within the four walls of a studio or stage. The actor is tasked with filling in this fourth side to create more, more environment around them or setting anchor points for you to look at to keep repeated actions consistent. An example of this would be checking the time when looking at a clock or looking out of a window when checking the view. This proved more use, but most useful to me during the tracker scene when I would be looking around looking for Christopher. I'll be using my eye line and looking at audience members as if they were the arid landscapes I was scouring through. It was also effective at making my character better as it gave me an anchor point as a person to look at as if I thought they were Christopher. The human shape and embodiment allowed me to better find my purpose throughout my character. Whilst playing the tracker, I used the Laban efforts of press and slash. This was more to do with my actor to actor relationship. The relation between the trackers was that my tracker, the hunter, was the leader as he had hunted before and it was needed to establish the dominance and status that I had over the other two trackers in my scene. I also applied Uta Hagen's fourth side to my character of the priest. Whilst I was playing the priest, I would make sure to include the audience in everything that I did, as if they were the townsfolks around Christopher and his family. For the priest, I applied four different Laban efforts towards my character. Two of them were aimed in the movement, and the other two were aimed in how I played the character. For the movement, I used glide and press. The glide was for the priest's lightness. He wasn't a stereotypical priest, but I still wanted to play him like one using the kind of stereotypical older man priest. Small, light steps and gliding along friendly. The press, however, came from the second part of the priest. With the setting of this being set in the future after a post-climate crisis, I decided that the priest would be a more rougher, hands-on priest, someone who may build the church or do refurbishments for it. This meant that I was much more burly and maybe pressed a bit heavier in my steps and had some dominance in my walk. The second half of my lab and efforts came from the characterisation. The two efforts that I used here were the ring and flick efforts. My choice for the two was the ring was to be more persistent and greedy when talking to Christopher when pursuing his need knowing of the pearl. The priest wants the pearl, but he doesn't want to let on that he's the one that's going to steal it. So this is where the flick comes into play. I would use the flick to kind of play off on the innocence and the quirkiness of a priest just maybe having jokes with the people around him or even playing on the innocence of an old man. For my actor to audience relationship, the place I've decided to put that in was in the nightmare sequence in which I played a grotesque version of a priest. In this sequence, I spin around Kai and during the times where I faced the front, I made sure to pick a certain area to look at in the audience and fix my eye line as I moved, tilting my head as I went. Or, alternatively, I would lock my eyes in place and have them scour that line across the audience. We have grotesque masks on for this, and I felt that this scene needed to be scary and uneasy, and the idea of introducing the audience into it by focusing solely on them in those moments and letting them feel, feel and understand how Kai felt was crucial. Early on, before we started the pearl, we took some time in lesson going over trust fall exercises. The ones that I wanted to focus on were the running and jumping trust fall and the laying back trust fall. These two trust falls were important for us because during the movement scene of when Christopher finds the pearl, we had to undergo one of those movements where Andy would dive on top of six of us and we would catch him. This helped me prepare me, this helped prepare me for the role as I was very unsure of when I came to do it, how I would handle this situation. During and outside of these lessons, me and Andy would take turns to catch each other in a trust fall exercise, helping build my confidence and his in these exercises. We practiced the dive into the water for the pearl several times in lesson, making sure that all six of us catching him were in agreement how we did it. We made sure we kept strong hands so that he wouldn't fall between us, but loose legs and body so we could bend and support the fall. This was to ensure that both us and Andy didn't get injured. This built a relationship of trust between the actors involved in catching and Andy himself, knowing that we would catch him and he was safe in our hands. We were also tasked with personifying the ocean, as the idea we had here was that the ocean wasn't just guiding Christopher on the journey, it was there with him, experiencing it and enjoying it. We landed on the idea of wonder and bewilderment around what Christopher was doing. 
For me, I decided to go with the idea of being childlike or more innocent and younger. The idea that you're a child there, experiencing things for the first time, the curiosity and the unknownness, loving every moment of it. Getting these lighter, giddier qualities in my movement also freed up my ability to be more flexible and more responsive to what we needed to do in the lifts and the movements around those. If there was one thing I was to take away from this experience is that the actor-to-actor -actor and actor-to-audience relationships are key moments needed for character development. During my early performances, such as Jack and the Beanstalk, a storytelling piece where we focused on the audience being children, I didn't include the audience as much as I could have. However, during The Pearl, and furthermore into our new one, Brand New Ancients, a spoken word poem performed as a play, I've been focusing on including the audience more where possible, making sure that my eye lines up, I'm addressing the audience, and that, if I need to, I can turn my body appropriately.